Diesel. Diesel. Well, you put me in your spotlight now, man. What? What's going on? Diesel. Today, we're going home. Are you serious? Going home today, man. You ready to go home? I don't believe you. I believe it when I see it. I'm going home, man. The official start to the day. Oh. Oh. There it is. So we've been gone uh, 17 days. I think it is. I think it's 17 days this trip. A much longer trip than uh, we've had for a while. And it was fun. It was good. We went to Northern Ontario, Quebec, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Maryland, Georgia, and now back across to Manitoba. So it was a lot of fun. Why is everything dinging at me now? I'm trying to talk to the good people here. That's how it happens, right? I'm not even joking. I can sit in this truck, complete silence. No GPS yapping at me, no truck beeping at me, no phone dinging for like hours. And then I'll be like, you know, what? I want to talk to the good people. Let's 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 vlog a little. Let's talk to the good people. Everything starts dinging and beeping and ringing. GPS starts yelling at me. They all want to say hi to you guys. They all like you guys a lot. That's the way it is. Let's go home. We're not getting any closer to home sitting here. And this guy's already backing out because he knows in beside me. He's having a tough time with it though. There's nothing behind you, buddy. Just give her. Okay, you wanna? That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. Ever. All right, okay, so I'm gonna get on the road as well. We have about three hours to the border and about another hour and a half into Headingley, Manitoba, just west of Winnipeg. And we gotta deliver this load I have in the box behind me. And then we go home. We'll go home for about two days. It won't be that long, but my next home time will be longer. But this home time is two days. And we got a lot of work to do at home. So once again, we're not getting any closer to getting anything done sitting here. So let's get out there. Wow, are we really back in Canada? Do you feel that? Diesel, do you feel that? Exactly. A smooth road. They just finished with Highway 75 here again, so we've actually got a smooth highway here. And this is going to be smooth for at least six months. Wow. Enjoy it now while you can because it's not going to last long. This is Highway 75 northbound, just over the border back into Canada. I was in the U.S. for eight days. That was the longest time I have visited there in a long time. Crossed through at Holton, Maine, went down the east coast to Georgia. Picked up our stuff there, moseyed our way back. It was kind of my, the fault of my logbook that it took longer. It should have. We should have been back home already. I should be sitting on the porch right now with a cold drink in my hand. But no! No, the law says I had to slow down. I've been working too much, Trucker Josh. You've been working too much. If you work anymore, we're gonna fine you. If you keep working, we're gonna put you in jail. Okay, okay. Guess I can't work too much then. Do you have to worry about that at your job? Do you have to worry about them putting you in jail for working overtime? Anyways, we uh, got like an hour and a half to Winnipeg here, so, and uh, gotta go around to the west side there. I am enjoying, wow, this is a smooth highway. I'm glad I'm documenting this, because this will probably never happen again. Wow, and they built it, looks like with cement this time and not with asphalt, which is good, because that's what the Americans do, and their highways seem to last a lot longer than our highways. But the Americans also build their highways with like a four foot foundation. You ever seen them building one of their interstates? Like from the ground up? Like they, they, they put like four foot of foundation on that thing. A lot of our Canadian roads, we put like what? Six inches? <laughs> well, we're just a little brother. We can't do everything as big and fancy. We don't have all the money they have, I guess. They do have access to a little bit more uh, moolah than we do, so I guess it is what it is. It's still better. At least it's paved. And it could be gravel. Sometimes gravel is smoother, though, than some of our paved highways when the potholes start showing up. Sometimes I'd rather have a gravel highway. But 
Anyway, yeah, it's been a good day. It's gotten hotter as we got no came further north. It's 23 Celsius out right now. Probably like 75, I'm guessing, Fahrenheit. Somewhere near 70, 75? 70? I don't know. Very nice. It's very nice. I think that's, yeah, it's around 70, isn't it? What do I know? Fahrenheit makes no sense. It makes no sense. That's silly. That's silly talk. Fahrenheit. Welcome to Winnipeg. We're in the suburb of St. Norbert. Right at the southern tip of the city when you're coming up to 75. We're gonna jump onto the perimeter here and take the perimeter around to Headingley, which is on the west side of the city. You know why we have the perimeter in Winnipeg? You know why? Because Winnipeg is home to Canada's largest biolab. You know, just like the biolab that leaked this virus in Wuhan, in China, we have one of those right here in Winnipeg. Funny thing is though, uh, ours has never had any leaks. But just saying, if there was a leak, they have the perimeter to quarantine the city. So pretty much if there was a leak, the entire city would be quarantined inside the perimeter. But uh, yeah, right uh, in the inner city, I believe it's by the Arlington Bridge, is that where it is? Is the uh, Canadian Biolab Research Center. So all of the worst viruses in the world, including the new sickness going around, that is all being researched right here in Winnipeg at our facility. And we have somehow managed to contain every single one of them and never had one single incident in the history of the, of the, of the whole lab, the history of the lab. But just saying, just throwing that out there. Winnipeg is home to a bio lab too, and we've had no problems. But uh, that's why they built the perimeter. That's what I was told anyways. Maybe they lied to me. I don't know, a lot of people have been lying to me recently. All kinds of people all over the world always telling lies. So, research it for yourself. But from what I was told, the perimeter here around Winnipeg was built for quarantine in case there was a leak at the Canadian bio lab. I guess they would surround the city with the military? Uh, I guess if you're inside the perimeter when the leak happens, you gotta stay in the city, you gotta stay inside the perimeter. I guess they bring the military in place into lockdown city, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I was told. Well, we're all loaded up. Put the empty trailer in the yard. Swept it out, made it all nice and clean, ready for the next driver. Got all my stuff and my weasel into the pickup and we're headed home. It's a little drive, it's quite a drive to home yet from here, but... Be a little nice to live like right next door to the yard, but... Man, eh, whatever. I like the seclusion, I like being far away from people from big groups of people. Comes in handy when there's pandemics going around, you know? It's kind of nice. I was reading a news article yesterday from around the southeast area here of Manitoba saying that apparently uh, rural properties in Manitoba have been uh, selling like crazy, They've been skyrocketing. Everybody's trying to get out of the city and they're realizing the benefits of living in the country. Yeah, you live around a whole bunch of people, you never know what you might catch. I was country before it was cool. Fun fact for you, this church on the right here has a green roof on Highway 59 south of Winnipeg. Uh, my parents helped build that. They were leaders in that church. It used to be called Village Gospel Fellowship. And my dad was a deacon, my mom was the accountant. I believe my dad was also an elder, elder and deacon. And the pastor that we had when we were in this church is the pastor that married us, Pastor Ken Harder. He's the one who, uh, he moved down south, he moved to Kansas, he's a pastor there now. Lucky guy escaped the cold. <laughs> that was a long time ago already. Unfortunately, the church uh, broke up. Everybody went their own ways, the building was sold. Yeah, that's the church I grew up in, anyway. I was there many days a week. Oh, quite a few days a week, anyway. 
Yeah, I remember uh, we used to, before we had that building built, we had gathered for church on Sundays in the school, the elementary school in Niverville. And then eventually we had saved up enough money and we built this building. Well, those were the good old days. Long before I had any responsibilities of my own, just lived with mom and dad, came home, there was food on the table every supper time, there's food in the cupboards all the time, fridge was always full, I never had to worry about buying anything myself. Oh, those were the days, living with mom and dad. I moved out of the house when I was 18, a little too young, but I was ambitious and uh, ready to be independent, anxious to be independent. I could have waited at home a few more years, probably would have been smart, but meh. I gained a lot of experience and I learned a lot of lessons the hard way, and that's the best way to learn sometimes. Because it doesn't matter how many times people tell me something is bad or I shouldn't do something, until I actually experience it for myself, it usually doesn't stick as well. And we're at home. Unloaded all the stuff I need to wash on my laundry inside. Just backing into the garage now. I'm gonna unload all of my equipment that I took off the flatbed truck, all my flatbedding equipment. Put it away neatly in the garage here. Oh, that's good enough. Oops. Whoa. Careful, Josh. Jeez. All right, so. My ladder, some of my corners, uh, oil, antifreeze stuff that I had bought, battery charger, stuff like that. I'm gonna put that all in the garage here because tomorrow we gotta put wood, plywood, into the bed here because we gotta close up underneath our veranda. We'll make a vlog out of it tomorrow. But uh, there's a squirrel that's trying to make a nest underneath our veranda. And, uh, well, He's getting evicted. And we're closing up his little home so that he doesn't come back. There we go. Beautiful. Very important, very important. Gotta look cool. Right on. Britt has got some flowers going on here. Look at this, making our house look all nice. That's not a flower, that's a tomato. That's a tomato. That's a red, juicy flower. Mm -hmm. it's a delicious flower. A delicious flower, yes. Look at that. Wow. Chevy, what do you think? Mom been making the yard look real nice. I think he's over it. He's been dealing with it all week. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this, our trees are starting to bud. Just yesterday, remember I was down south and I was saying it's like full on summer already? Look at this, just yesterday these started to bud here at home. Our kids, we started budding last week, but like flowering yesterday. Very nice, very nice. And up front here, look at this, wow. I've been missing out, spring sprung without us. flowers in here. Chevy, did you plant those all by yourself? He did, it's true. He grew opposable thumbs overnight. Wow. More over here. We got the whole screen room set up. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, it's good to be home. Look at you, Big Frank, getting all cuddly now and everything. Oh, he's so attached. What happened to you? I don't know. Don't judge me. Mama worked her magic on you, didn't she? His dog whisperer. I just told him I loved him a couple times, and lo and behold, he's he attached. He believed you. <laughs> they never believe me when I say it. <laughs> Got a wiener lying over there. The whole family. That's wiener's spot with wiener's blanket. Spoiled. <laughs> He is, he is the most spoiled one we have. I don't know. No, you just stay there, Wiener. Okay, you're gonna come anyway. Okay. He's jealous. 
It's a room for three. Thanks for watching this video today, guys. I just put it together here for you and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Tomorrow, this video is going to be more about uh, the renovations we're doing around the house. Uh, i got to put that ceiling underneath the veranda, and it turns out to be a whole lot more work than I thought it was. I thought we'd get it done in a day and a half. It took four days. Uh, there's not four vlogs worth in those four days, so I think I combined it pretty much into one or two vlogs. I'm going to edit those right away, though. I hope you tune in tomorrow. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Join us here. I make a new video every day, and I'd love to share my daily life with you. Uh, I am a truck driver. I travel across all of Canada and the United States. I have a lot of fun doing it, but I also include stuff like this when I'm at home, so you sort of get the full picture of what it's like being a truck driver in North America from a Canadian's point of view. Everybody's point of view is a little different, but I should say from my point of view. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I love my life. Got a great job, got a great wife, got great dogs, and I got a great audience here on YouTube. And, uh, you know, it'd be an honor to have you here with us. So hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you tomorrow.